Hey friends, welcome back to my crafty hen house. My name is Elaine. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to do a little uh, planting or replanting or the start of planting some strawberry plants that I bought online. Now I bought these plants from Hand Picked Nursery. They send this nice little thank you card and you can actually go onto YouTube and find a video about how to replant these strawberry plants and the first thing you are to do is rinse them off in the sink and get all the dirt off them they don't come heavily moisturized so that uh, they don't uh, get moldy in the packaging and so you're going to rinse them off give them some hydration then we're going to put them on a plate and we're going to let them sit for an hour And we're back into the seed shed. It's been a couple days since I showed you the strawberries that I was going to uh, set out and prepare. Uh, we've had some really crazy times around here, so I wasn't able to get to them, but that's okay because they're doing wonderful. I brought you out in the seed shed today. I'm gonna get these started in my cups. I have these plastic cups with holes in the bottom of them and they recommend on the site that you use about a five inch cup because of the root length and these root lengths you can tell are pretty substantial so you don't want to crowd them in a small pot this is just going to allow them to grow quicker so that we can get them up potted now I'm gonna take these and put these all in the pots. They recommend that you bring them in the house for two weeks until they sprout four leaves um, 
on the top of each plant and then you can up pot them again but this is the way they come in a bag um, through the mail and um, then what I'm going to do is I have decided I'm going to put my strawberries in a flower box this is a 36 inch flower box I may have to get a second box uh, because I do have 14 plants and I don't want to crowd them but for right now the next two weeks uh, these little cups are going to be fine and I can determine really how much space I need in order for them to grow. I decided to put them in the flower boxes because we have so many ground critters here in Florida and they will climb over my boxes. You've seen the problems I've had with rabbits, which are not my problem anymore, but I do have little rodents that come up from my back canal. And also I have my birds that come into my yard. Let me show you really quick. So this is an egret. He is right outside in my backyard and we had the sprinklers on last evening and they fly in and get the grubs or the little frogs or worms uh, but generally they come in a pack I don't see any but him but when I say a pack I'm talking close to about 30. So you can see that's another reason why I need to get them in a location up by my front porch where I can kind of monitor them right outside of my kitchen window. So I'm gonna turn you around and we're gonna get started getting these little strawberries put into their planters. Starting with the soil, their recommendation is to start with 70% soil or topsoil and 30% of sand and, and that is strictly for good drainage. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend this together. Now you don't always have to be precise but you want to get as close to the ratio um, as you can and that's just for adequate drainage. Uh, strawberries uh, need not to have their roots uh, stay wet. They will rot. Um, to be quite honest with you, I did purchase a set of uh, strawberries uh, previously and I wasn't able to get on top of them soon enough and I actually lost them uh, by having them in water. So the soil is blended up nicely and if you feel you need to add uh, some more sand, uh, go right ahead. I think I'm going to add another cup. Now as you can see this uh, soil is a nice blend. It has some perlite in it for uh, moisture retention if you're not going to um, stay up on top of the water but it also has a nice consistency of sand in it uh, for the drainage. So these are the cups that I've decided to use. They are cups that I had other plants uh, growing in and they've done really well. We're going to go ahead and we're going to fill this with some of our nice soil that we've blended and I personally like to hold the plant up uh, on top of a small amount of soil and then pour the soil around it. We're going to plant to the crown of the strawberry plant. You don't want to go higher. Uh, you'll cause uh, rot to the plant itself. You just want to get the roots covered. And again, I take these and I dunk them in water uh, to give them a nice drink before they go into their soil. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in a cup and then we're going to add soil all around it until we get the soil to the crown. We're going to do this 
with each plant and then nicely water it. And that seems to work really well. You'll see this soil that I've chosen to use has uh, not only planting soil, but it has perlite in it and the sand. The sand gives it such a nice um, drainage uh, for these strawberries. They're quite particular. So, and there we have our first one. Now I have 14 of these. And then what I'm going to do is I will take them and put them inside uh, this planter box and take them into the house as I prepare them for the next two weeks uh, and keep them watered inside the house. So let's do another quick one. Again, I use a little bit of soil in the bottom. Take your strawberry, dunk the roots, give them a nice drink, then go ahead and we're going to add soil to the crown of the plant. Let's turn. This also ensures when you hold the plant down there and you have this, this clear cup that you can see that uh, the, the dirt is filled up and you have your roots nicely placed. So there's our number two. And he's looking really, really pretty. So we're gonna wait until this has actually four leaves and then it will be ready to transplant. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up all of these plants. And here we have it. This is all of our planted strawberries. We had 14 of them. And I put each one of them in a cup. I uh, used some water on their roots before I put them in the cups. And you can see they're pretty dry right now. I haven't taken them up to the house to water them, uh, but that is our next step is to get them watered. I'm gonna leave them right in this window box container. Uh, it has a tray on the bottom of it to catch any uh, water that drains out the bottom. And I think this is a perfect um, little compartment to keep them in inside the house. So I hope you found this little tutorial helpful in how to grow uh, these strawberry starts that I received in the mail. And I will link the company that I bought them from down at the bottom of the, um, underneath the video. And I came out here, I just wanna say, I came out here, I know that our gardening season really begins uh, for our fall season around August. And it's, it's about that time when you start assessing what seeds you have, uh, if you have your fertilizers that you're using, how's your compost doing, do you have perlite to add to your soil, do you need to amend your beds. This is the time that we should really be considering that kind of thing. I'm going to take you really quickly out to um, my garden and I'm going to show you uh, how my garden is doing. I did go in and uh, removed a lot of the tomatoes that were all done. And we are in July, July 15th actually today is. And it's beautiful, it's a beautiful yard. So I'm gonna take you in my garden really quickly and I'll show you exactly what's left over here. But I was really thinking uh, that this is the time that I need to get in here, assess everything, and see what's left, see what I need to do, if I need to pull anything else, or just sit here and monitor what's going on. So let me turn you around. So this is what we have going on in here. This is my green stock, of course, with all of my herbs and my calendula. This tomato plant is a done that will have to come out uh, those two buckets back there had sweet potatoes but I wasn't quite sure whether they were going to do well for me this year so uh, I did pull them out and I put some peonies in there I had to amend the soil and uh, see if I couldn't get those to grow 
these buckets are empty and this of course is my one sweet potato that I have in a bucket left and my spearmint and this over here is my huckleberry and of course this beauty is my powder puff tree and then on this side this was the sweet potato that I tried in the bale of hay. It's doing hmm, okay, but I'm just gonna leave it there. It needs ample time. Uh, this is a uh, elderberry tree that I pulled out. I have three others that are doing amazing. And then I have basil, my peppers that I just kind of threw in here for some fun. And then these over here are huckleberry. What I did was I took two of the huckleberries and I pulled them out of the pots and put them in planters. Uh, I want to see how they're doing and they actually seem to really, really like being in a planter. Compared to the ones in the pot, they're kind of sparse and straggly. So I think I've determined that these will all be planted in a long planter, possibly on the outside of this garden. Um, a little bit taller but a narrow and then this is tomatoes um, that I've had that I kind of just left and haven't been able to get to but they're ready to come out and then of course these are my not a pina peppers um, they're sweet peppers they are ready to go there you these are green up here and I've got a whole bunch still growing I love the not a pinas and they seem to love this little planter here so they're gonna stay in there and the tomatoes in the back uh the campares they're done and they will come out again this is another um peony and i'm just keeping my fingers crossed that they grow and my uh oregano calendula bee balm my um lemon balm I have a little bit of parsley in there, but that all seems to be doing pretty good. So it's getting to be that time where you can see the struggles that happen um, with the, the weather being the way that it is. And I'm just going to leave well enough alone, get out here and pull the tomato plants they're really doing us uh, no good being in that soil anymore and this guard this little planter right here the four by four i actually uh went ahead and i amended that planter i put um king neptunes in there i put some um peat moss in there i really added a fair amount like a wheelbarrow full of peat moss in there because the soil was very dense and uh, I could see that a lot of my tomatoes that I had in there previously were struggling. Uh, this uh, pepper a box right here that I showed you and I had restarted, you can kind of see where it should really be amended. I took this soil and I pushed it all over up towards this huckleberry. And uh, that's doing really, really good. So by trial and error, uh, you find what works for you in your area. And I think by having this small garden, I can expand on this garden now, knowing the things I can grow and the things I can't grow. I know what I need to do to the soil to prepare it for the next growing season and uh, not be afraid of uh, making mistakes and learning along the way. And that's another thing I wanted to um, be frankly honest with you about these strawberry starts. Now, it's the first time that I've grown them down here in Florida and back up where I'm originally from in upstate New York, you just uh, frankly can find them in the yard when you mow, you can, just bend down and grab them. They're about the size of your thumb, but you can literally um, pick them up and, and, uh, and eat them right there. While I have you out here at the bees, I'm gonna turn you around and show you another pest that we have down here. 
we're always dealing with so many different th uh, little critters and these lizards uh, are a pest. Uh, we've had them now hanging around my beehive. I'm not sure whether they're getting the little beetles or they're actually going after my bees. Um, but he's been here for a little bit and he's a pest. So it all depends on where you live and your location, what you have to worry about and consider when you're doing your garden. Um, I hope to um, know better my next time around and uh, prepare a little bit more on the things that I can grow and I can't grow. Um, but right now, I just uh, want you to know that there's no mistakes that can uh, make you do, um, have a bad garden. It all depends on if you're willing to recover from the mistakes. And uh, I've made plenty of them, I still do. Uh, but uh, I think that everything is going to turn out with these strawberries and with my next garden and I look forward to planting it with you all. So thank you again for joining me. If you are getting any help from my videos, I, I would implore you to subscribe and come back. Be notified by hitting that bell when I have another video up. And until next time, thank you for joining me and God bless.